great power comes great responsibility. Then when I said I want him to have a lot of personal problems and nothing ever goes right for him, he said, Stan, don't you know what a hero is? I believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength. She's gone. It's all my fault. My Uncle Ben was killed. I lost Gwen by him. She was my MJ. So I carried on, tried to, um, try to keep going, try to keep being the, uh, that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, because I know that's what she would have wanted, but at some point, I just, I stopped pulling my punches. I've worshipped you, your mind, your conscience, wanting to help others, the way you never gave up. It's a leap of faith. I don't know what to do. Spider-Man has always been my favorite hero throughout my life, influencing not only me, but countless others. He may be someone who took on the world of responsibility and power from a young age, but he felt the most human. While Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland portrayed the character well, their versions have not drawn me in as much as Yuri Lowenthal's Spider-Man. Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today I'll be talking about why Insomniac Spider-Man is the best adaptation. I will be taking both games into account in this video, as well as discuss what we can look forward to in the future of the series. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Insomniac's take on Spider-Man is remarkable because they captured the essence of Peter's character in both games. They've done this through original high quality storytelling, recognizing what makes Peter such a compelling character. It's not about his face, but about the depth of his character, even if he looks like Tom Holland. What else makes Tom Holland Insomniac Spider-Man such an outstanding adaptation? They skillfully portrayed Spider-Man's relatability by showcasing his real-world problems and mistakes. Peter Parker's life is filled with ups and downs, and the games brilliantly depict these challenges. From career, money, relationship, and family issues, they've highlighted the human side of the character. In Spider-Man 2, we see him lose his job as a high school teacher because he and Miles had to save the city from Sandman. I better see you in 10 seconds. Or oh no! Um, uh, uh, breaking up. I will soon. After Pete receives the symbiote from his friend Harry, their friendship becomes strained. From starting a foundation together to healing the world, they began resenting each other as each of them desired the power of the symbiote themselves. If your friend won't give back the one thing that could save your life, I can see why you would be angry. The symbiote's corruption also impacted his relationship with MJ, especially after she released an article about him on the Daily Bugle. I was actually fearful for her as he tried to attack her, and I'm sure he's fearful as well knowing what was going to happen as he warned her oh yes! oh i'm terrified ah! go 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 relationship with Miles also became rocky due to it. From wanting to be a mentor for Miles, he gradually began to see him as a burden. It was evident that his addiction to the symbiote turned him against his friends and who he was as a person. In addition to this, it was not just the symbiote that made him this way, but a looming thought in his mind that he is useless as Spider-Man without the symbiote. There is irony to what he said. It makes me a better Spider-Man. You said it chose me, Doc. It makes me a better Spider-Man. That statement brings you back to the first game after defeating Otto, where he says he's trapped in his useless body without his metallic arms. Peter cherished his mentor and wanted to be like him, and it appears that he adopted that mindset from him in the second one. Insomniac has showcased his struggles, flaws, and determination to face them. He felt a painful betrayal in the first game by Dr. Octavius, the mentor he admired. I'll be trapped in this useless body! But he learned from him to make the hardest decisions in order to change the world. And one of those decisions came at a cost, his beloved Aunt May. Rest in peace, Aunt May. We'll remember your valuable words. One. 
everyone loves a hero. And two, don't forget the eggs, Peter. <laughs> I forgot the eggs. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Spider-Man may have saved the world, but Peter has lost those who have meant a lot to him, and Insomniac is aware of that very well. Pete saves the world, but he faces criticism from the public, especially through the Daily Bugle. Spider-Man, is he a threat or a menace? Our phone lines are open. Menace, definitely a big fat menace. Let me tell you something about this <laughs> called superhero. Regardless of how much he's been pushed, he will always fight for the greater good. The price of being Spider-Man was high, but that makes him who he is. That's why Insomniac's adaptation was the best. And not just of Peter, but of Miles too. I've recently noticed random videos come up on YouTube where people were criticizing Spider-Man 2's ending with bizarre headlines like, Games killed because Miles took over. Ay, coño. In the ending, Peter decided to take a break from being a hero and be Peter Parker for a while. So he relied on Miles to look after the city as Spider-Man. And I will say, this ending is well deserved, regardless of what the other spooters are saying. Go be Peter Parker for a while. In Across the Spider-Verse, Miguel explained canon events to Miles in which all Spider-Men have in order to shape them into the heroes they become. He then tells Miles that his fate as Spider-Man is not canon. There's a world out there with no Spider-Man to protect them because it bit you instead. You're not supposed to be Spider-Man. The flaw I found in this logic is that he's deciding who gets to be Spider-Man. He's not even like other Spider-Men. Firstly, he has a cape which is goddamn disrespectful, and doesn't even share the canon events with other Spider-People. Secondly, Stanley would disagree, as he believes anyone can be under the mask. Thirdly, Miles has always admired Peter and continuously strived to be a better Spider-Man through him. And it shows. He was there to remind Peter of his identity when he was completely under the symbiote's influence. I know you're hurting, Pete, but you're better than this! I know, I know, but... No. no. When Pete was completely overpowered by Venom, he was there to help him fight. Some would even say Pete could handle these events on his own, but he is still human. Both of them are human, not invincible. As Spider-Man, Pete had unique abilities. And even with the symbiote, he was overpowered by Kraven at one point and had a near-death experience. If Miles faced Kraven alone, I'm sure things would not have ended well for him either. And Pete gets to enjoy his life happily and peacefully for once. Judging from the end credit cutscenes, it does seem likely that his peace will be short-lived. So both of them will be back for Spider-Man 3 as a team, which is great. I've always loved their dynamic together as Spider-People. There were many upcoming theories on what we could possibly see in the third game, or in the DLC. The third game is the ending of Insomniac's trilogy, which would mean they will brew something huge for us. As there is a Nelson and Murdoch sign in the game, this could hint the gamers of a Daredevil DLC. And if you played the Flame side missions, you would meet Cletus Cassidy, a cult leader possessing the Red Symbiote. This confirms for sure that we will meet Carnage in the next game, or a DLC. Death to you, father. No! Not you, father. You. Father. Oh, and to give you a brief recap on the second game, Miles saved Harry, but Harry is in a coma. Norman feels very vengeful to Spider-Man and sees him as a villain that hurt his kid. Most likely in the next game, he will try to save Harry by creating a serum and also using it on himself to become the Green Goblin and exact revenge. If Octavius reveals Spider-Man's identity, Norman would most likely do so by attacking the next person Peter cherishes. Mary Jane. Perhaps Insomniac may recreate the Gwen Stacy falling scene, but with MJ. <laughs> If you played Marvel Spider-Man 2, you would have seen the cutscene where Rio introduces Miles to her date and his daughter, Cindy Moon, aka Silk. It appears that Miles Morales will have a potential stepsister with Spidey powers. Insomniac will probably take a different approach with her character than in the comics. Maybe we'll be able to switch between her, Miles, and Peter in the next game. With more Spider-People in this universe, people may begin to get confused. 
To talk about what could be coming to Marvel's Spider-Man 2, there was talk about upcoming DLC suits and rumors of upcoming updates in the Game Awards on December 7th. Hopefully we can get a new game plus, change the time of day and weather, mission playability, and photo mode selfies. Overall, they really created the best adaptation of Spider-Man in their original story. Spider-Man 1 may have been a masterpiece, but Spider-Man 2 was the art gallery. They didn't just excel in storytelling, but they surpassed expectations with their gameplay. The swinging mechanics make you truly feel like Spider-Man, and New York is expanded for you to explore. Fast traveling is an option, but with versatile ways to move around the city, why would you ever want to? The transition between gameplay and cutscenes is seamless, and the combat along with finishers make you feel invincible. Marvel's Spider-Man 2 required your high degree to detail, as many overwhelming events require your attention, using gadgets at your disposal while dodging a ton of hunter arrows. This game had a way of making you fall in love with it, and keep playing and playing even after finishing the story. So much love and effort was put into this game, that we pay attention to every single detail. Bike riding, a Black Panther reference, visiting Aunt May and Uncle Ben's grave, Miles having a worse sense of balance than Pete when doing air tricks. Everything about this game was an incredible experience, and I'm excited to see what more Insomniac has to offer. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and comment your opinions on the game or my take on the character. Did you enjoy seeing Bully Maguire in this game? What do you think of Insomniac Spider-Man? What are you looking forward to seeing in the next game or DLC? Thank you for watching, and that's all.